What is going on guys, it is WrestleGamia here, back with another video. Well, we're now firmly in the SmackDown vs Raw era of our ongoing series on secrets you may not have known about the WWE SmackDown video game series. At this time we reach one of the best games in the series and hidden within it are plenty of easter eggs as well as a whole host of facts that you may not have known. There are some good ones in here so be sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell because today we're looking at 10 facts you didn't know about SmackDown vs Raw 2006. Number 1. Unique Chance Now as we've learnt in the past few weeks, the crowd is one of the most important components of a wrestling match. Wrestlers feed off the crowd and vice versa. And THQ noticed the importance and they needed to liven up the crowd in video games and in SmackDown vs Raw 2006 you can clearly hear the crowd chant depending on how the match is going. If you stand still in the ring and do nothing, you'll hear boring chants from the crowd. If you're playing the fulfill your fantasy match, something I'm sure most of us did when we were young, surprisingly you'll hear slut chants. Yeah, you heard that right, well this was a different era after all. And how can we forget, this was the first time they included the famous You Suck chants during Kurt Angle's entrance. Holy sh** can also be heard, and that's not our censorship, that's theirs. Number 2. You Can Play With Us as we mentioned in our previous video on SmackDown vs Raw, it was the premiere game to include full voiceovers in season mode. Now, whilst it was awesome to hear them, it meant that the story mode was extremely linear. But the trend continued on in SmackDown vs Raw 2006, and with a much larger roster of almost 60 unique wrestlers, we were hoping to take some of them through the season mode. Now, the only problem is they had only 33 voices recorded, thus you couldn't play with the rest of the roster. Now it's understandable that legends such as Andre the Giant, the British Bulldog and the Junkyard Dog were not possible to play with as they were added posthumously, but other such legends such as The Rock, Bret Hart, Hulk Hogan, they didn't provide any voiceover. And this is not limited to just legends, it's some of the current superstars on the roster like Charlie Haas, the Basham Brothers, Eugene, Heidenreich, Mark Jindrak, Paul London, Rob Conway, Scotty Tuhati, Snitsky, Stevie Richards, Sylvain Grenier, Tajiri and the entire Diva section. Now to be fair, there wasn't many who wanted to take Rob Conway through the Wrestlemania ranks, but there may have been a handful who were disappointed. Number 3. Going Handheld Amongst its many other firsts, Smackdown vs Raw 2006 marked the first time this series went handheld via the PlayStation Portable. While this version was pretty similar to the PlayStation 2 game, there were a few special features exclusive if you decided to go handheld. WWE legend Jake the Snake Roberts, for example, was an exclusive character to the portable version of the game and could only be played in the PS2 edition if the player connects their PSP to their console via a USB cable. Either that or they alternatively use a cheat device, and probably best to those who didn't want to shell out $200 for a PlayStation Portable. The PSP version also included three exclusive minigames that were playable from the beginning of the game. All of these offered single player and multiplayer modes with multiplayer allowing up to four players to join in at once over a local connection. The first minigame, WWE Game Show, tested the knowledge of wrestling fans by offering 500 multi-layered wrestling questions covering a variety of topics ranging from wrestling music to finishes, styles, history, feuds and much more. Damn they need to bring something like this back. Other minigames included a poker game as well as Eugene's airplane game in which the player had to navigate Eugene around the ring in the fastest time possible. Of course there were negatives to getting the portable version too. One notable difference between the two versions of the game included a lack of in-ring commentary on the portable game. This version of the game was also reported to have horrendous loading times. Warnings would appear on the screen when a created superstar was about to be chosen for a match. Number 4. A Man of Many Talents a Taz has been known as many things over his illustrious career. He's known as the human suplex machine, smackdown commentator and even podcast host. But one thing you may not label him as is a singer, but you can actually hear his dulcet tones in Smackdown vs Raw 2006 if you follow some specific instructions. 
Now it's not too complicated really as all you have to do is select a match with Shawn Michaels and when the time comes and you have your finisher stored up, play him out with some sweet chin music. If this is a match with the Smackdown commentary team, then you will hear Taz singing as HBK's opponent gets laid out cold. The ring is alive with the sound of music. Number 5. Commentary Screw Ups Commentary is a routinely one of the biggest complaints for WWE fans, both when it comes to actual WWE shows as well as video games where things often sound stilted and robotic as we're given the same few generic sound bites over and over again. Well, in SmackDown vs Raw 06, hidden amongst these are also some pretty glaring errors when it comes to the commentary team. If you chose, for example, to fight John Cena in your first match of the SmackDown storyline of the game story mode, Michael Cole will incorrectly refer to him as Rob Van Dam. It's hard to justify confusing these two wrestlers, especially when even the subtitles will call him John Cena. You'll notice another mistake if you play through a match featuring Christy Hemi while using the Raw commentary team. If she's able to hit a finishing move the low blow, JR and the King will instead say that was a DDT she hit. Also, if you chose to wrestle in the WrestleMania 9 arena, Michael Cole will start the match by welcoming you to Phoenix, Arizona, despite the event in question actually taking place at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, actually it was in the parking lot of Caesars Palace, but they ain't gonna mention that, are they? But number 6, Missing in Action. WWE fans can be great detectives and some of the best of those sleuths out there were able to look deep into the disc for SmackDown vs Raw 06 where hidden amongst the game's sound files were 6 unused announcer calls for Maven, Kenzo Suzuki and Mr. America. It's likely then based on that that these were meant to be playable characters at some point during the game's development but for some unknown reasons they were removed. It's unlikely that this was due to expiring contracts as the game included several characters on the roster whose contract expired during development such as Spike Dudley, Mark Jindrak and Joy Giovanni. So what was the reason then? Well, to be honest, we don't actually know. But if anyone does actually know, let us know in the comments down below because we're still upset we never got a chance to play as Mr. America. Hey, there were rumours in the game that he would have had a similar moveset to the completely unrelated Hulk Hogan but we can't imagine why that would have been. Other characters who were confirmed to have been removed from the game during production were Matt Hardy, who had been fired after the Edge and Lita affair went public. Also not included was the Dudley Boys, the Road Warriors, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Stephanie McMahon and the short-lived Luther Reigns, who's not related to Roman Reigns. Number 7. Playing as the Boss no, we're not talking about Sasha Banks here, but instead we're referring to the actual boss of Vince McMahon. Now whilst Vince wasn't technically a playable character in the game, there was a way to use him for a little while at least if you know what you were doing. To play as Vince, you first had to play through the whole of the general manager mode with the Raw brand, and during the mode's climax at WrestleMania, McMahon would appear as a special guest referee for one of the matches. By simply choosing to play the match and selecting the boss as your character, you could wrestle as him for the duration of the match. He even does a McMahon stunner and has some funny taunts. Now he won't be playable after this however, so you'll have to enjoy this one whilst it lasts. Number 8. Escape the Cage We always love finding a good glitch in a WWE game, as often these can have unintentional consequences of making the game a lot more fun to play, or at the very least, making it more interesting. There's a good one in this game that you can find when fighting it out in a steel cage match. Now this was the first time they revamped the cage match mechanics, so it probably led to this awkward glitch. Now first you have to make sure your opponent climbs the side of the cage that is located at the very back end of the ring. This is facing your way. After this, wait until they're almost at the very top of the cage, then just before they reach it, get near the side of the cage where your opponent is located and do a grapple. If you've done this correctly, the move that you will now see will look like a modified German suplex. When you both fall, you'll be outside of the cage though, and despite this, the match will still continue. There are no weapons or countouts from this point, and you can fight for as long as you want at ringside. Once you get back in the ring, the match will continue as normal, and you can even get back outside the cage again by repeating the same process. Number 9. Secret Match Finishes if you want to have an easier time winning the Buried Alive match in SmackDown vs Raw, there is a special casket finisher that can be activated by storing up one finishing move and getting your momentum bar full so that it's flashing. 
Once this is done, you just have to Irish whip your opponent into the casket and press L1. This will trigger the special casket finisher animation and end the match without you having to even bother closing the lid. You could also end the match prematurely if you were in the parking lot and you once again had a saved finisher combined with a full and flashing momentum bar. At this point you simply have to grab your opponent and punch them once, allowing you to walk while holding them by the hair. While in this stance, move them to the limo's back door and press the circle button to put your opponent in the car. After that, get ready for one special sequence. You're damn right that would have ended the match. And number 10, unlocking the spinner belt. Now John Cena's spinner belt was certainly divisive when he unveiled it back during this time period, as some saw it as a bastardization of the WWE title and a representative of what Cena was doing to its legacy, while others argued it was just the next in the long line of personalized WWE titles such as with Stone Cold Steve Austin's smoking skull belt. But regardless of your feelings on it, you can unlock it in SmackDown vs Raw 06 by beating Cena for the title at WrestleMania in the game story mode. If you didn't follow this particular story branch and ended up fighting Cena, you could still get it by winning the world title, then challenge Cena to a championship match in the exhibition mode. After winning that, you'd be given the choice of what belt you wanted, the original WWE title or the new spinner belt. But there you have it guys, 10 facts you didn't know about SmackDown vs Raw 2006. Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling video game content.